हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट चैप्टर नंबर नाइन ट्रेडर्स किंग्स एंड पिलग्रिम्स सो बेसिकली द नेम ऑफ दिस चैप्टर इंक्लूड्स थ्री टर्म्स दैट इज ट्रेडर्स यू ऑल नो वट आर हु आर ट्रेडर्स दीज आर द पीपल हु आर इन्वॉल्व इन ट्रेडिंग एक्टिविटी किंग्स यू नो हु दे आर किंग्स आर द पीपल हु रूल अ पर्टिकुलर किंगडम एंड देर आर पिलग्रिम्स सो बेसिकली पिलग्रिम्स आर द पीपल who come to visit a religious place they basically are the people who come from long distances to visit a particular place which is very important especially if it is important uh, it has a religious importance and in hindi pilgrims are also called teerth yatri so during this time the type of pottery which was found from various sites or different places in india was the northern black polished ware basically this was the pottery which was black in color and it was polished and this type of uh, pottery or especially the bowls and the plates belonging to this type of pottery were found from various places or archaeological sites throughout the indian subcontinent now the question is where do you think this type of pottery came to india from the thing is that traders traders may have carried them from the places where these these for this type of pottery was made and uh, and to sell them to other places now apart from this we also have south india which was very famous for gold spices spices in spices especially pepper and precious stones so these were the three important things which were found from south india gold spices and precious stones now among the spices pepper was very important pepper means kali mirch was particularly valued in roman empire i hope you all have heard the word rome rome is in today's italy so during this time uh there was a big empire in rome which was called roman empire in europe it was very famous and very important so much that it was known as black gold now imagine how much valuable this paper would be that it was compared to as gold so traders carried many of these goods to rome in ships across the sea and by land in caravans now there must have been quite a lot of trade as many roman gold coins have been found in south india so we all know trading activity is basically done by exchanging things today we have modern money but during early early time people used to exchange products or in some places there used to be coins so we we have found a lot of roman gold coins in south india which tells us that a lot of trading activity went on between south india and rome during that time for this trading activity now traders started exploring sea routes sea route means now they started using ships and sail through sea and some of these followed the coasts there were other across the arabian sea and bay of bengal where sailors took advantage of the monsoon winds this we have studied in geography to cross the seas more quickly so if they wanted to reach the western coast of the subcontinent from east africa or arabia they chose to sail with the southwest monsoon and sturdy ships had to be built for these long journeys today we have we have very advanced technology today the ships are powered through engine but during those days the ships depended on the wind it was with the help of the power of the wind that the ships were sailed now new kingdoms appeared or emerged along the coast coast are basically the places near the sea or ocean now the southern half of the subcontinent that is the south india 
is marked by a long coastline. We all have studied this that there is a long coastline which covers the uh, bottom half of India or the southern part of India. And in th this, we also have hills, plateaus and river valleys. Among the river valleys, the Kaveri river valley is the most important and very, very fertile. Now, there were chiefs and kings who controlled these river valleys and the coasts and they became very rich and powerful. Now, Sangam poems mention Muvendar. Muvendar uh, means, or sorry, uh, Sangam poems. Sangam poems are basically collection of poems which come basically from South India. So, they mention a word called Muvendar. This is a Tamil word meaning three chiefs used for heads of three ruling families that is the Cholas, Cheras and the Pandyas who became very powerful in South India around 2300 years ago. So basically these three Cholas, Cheras and Pandyas they became very important 2300 years ago in South India. Now each of these three chiefs had two centers of power. So each one of them had two centers, two power, powerful centers that is one inland, inland or in the area which had land and one on the coast. So basically one was the area which was far from the sea or towards the land and another was a place which was a coastal place. Of these six cities, two were very important. That is Puhar or Kaveri Patanam. Please remember Kaveri Patanam was where one of the very important port, port town or port city of the Cholas. And the, the other was Madurai. Madurai was the capital of the Pandyas. Now in this map here you can see here are these are Cheras, Pandyas. Choras. And here you can also look at Puhar. You can uh, see Madurai has been given, Puhar has been given. So basically these were the very uh, important uh, cities or important towns of, of that period. Now the chiefs or the kings, they did not collect regular taxes. Instead of which they demanded and received gifts from the people. They also went on military expeditions and collected tribute, tribute from neighboring areas. Tribute can be given in form of, for example, food grains or clothes, etc. They kept some of the wealth and distributed the rest among their supporters, including the members of their family, soldiers, poets, etc. Now, poets during this time were very important. Many poets whose compositions are found in the Sangam collection, uh, Sangam, Sangam collection composed poems in praise of chiefs who often rewarded them with precious stones, gold, horses, elephants, chariots and fine cloth. cloth. So basically during this time, uh, taxes were not collected regularly but the, the people or the kings received gifts from the people and most of the wealth these kings had they distributed among the different, different type of people especially the poets. Now around 200 years later a dynasty known as Satvahans became powerful in western India. The most important ruler of the Satvahanas was Gautami Shri Satkarni. We know about him from an inscription composed on behalf of his mother. His mother's name was Gautami Balashri. He and other Satvahana rulers were known as Lords of 
दक्षिण दक्षिणा पथ सो दीज वेर बेसिकली द लॉर्ड्स ऑफ दक्षिणा पथ दक्षिणा पथ हैज टू वर्ड्स दैट इज दक्षिण एंड पथ सो बेसिकली दे कंट्रोल द एरिया फ्रॉम वेर यू कैन गो टूवर्ड्स साउथ इंडिया बिकॉज दक्षिण मीन्स साउथ एंड पथ मीन्स वे लिटरली दिस दक्षिणा पथ मीन्स द रूट लीडिंग टू द साउथ विच वॉज ऑल्सो यूज एज अ नेम फॉर द एंटायर सदर्न रीजन सो बेसिकली दिस वॉज द रूट लीडिंग टू साउथ इंडिया एंड ही सेंट हिस आर्मी टू ईस्टर्न वेस्टर्न एंड सदर्न कोस्ट so remember what was the name of the dynasty the satvahanas and what was the name of the king or the ruler of a satvahanas gautami shri satkarni and uh, the, he was also known as the lord he, they the satvahana rulers were also known as lords of dakshinapath here in this map you can see these are this was the area which was controlled by the satvahana rulers so basically this was the area which basically uh, was the which controlled the whole route going towards the south india so they were known as lords of dakshinapath and here in this map you can see the coastal line of india that is the area touching the uh, sea or the ocean it is very huge it's very large so basically in india during this time when uh, where a lot of traders became important so trading activity happened uh, with the help of ships so a lot of places or port cities became important for example nowadays mumbai is a very important port city in the same way during that time we had two very important port city that is puhar puhar was also called kaveri patnam and madurai these became very important important towns now let us look at this poem about trade we can find evidence of trade in the sangam poem so basically these poems which were written by the these poets they told us a lot about the society and the culture during that period so evidence of trade is shown in sangam poem here is one which describes the goods brought into puhar an important port on the east coast here are brought swift prancing horses by sea in ships so basically horses were brought bales of black pepper in carts gems and gold borne in the himalayas sandalwood born in western uh, western hills the pearls of the southern seas and corals from the eastern coasts the yield of the ganga and the crops from the kaveri so basically uh, the food grains which grew in ganga uh, valley uh, ganga river valley and kaveri were brought here food stuffs were brought from sri lanka so sri lanka was also trading partner pottery from myanmar myanmar is also our neighboring country so these people also did trade with sri lanka and myanmar and other rare and rich so basically a lot of things have been mentioned which tells us a lot of trading used to happen during this period since trading was very important so there were three important families or three important ruling families in south india that is cholas cheras and pandyas please remember their names they were very important the towns or the city, port cities of puhar or kaveri patnam and madurai the capital of pandyas they became very important towns and cities town or city and we uh, a lot of a uh, training used to happen especially in south indian region and a lot of places emerged a lot of towns grew because of this training activity